Trudeau's private island vacation proves he's tone deaf once again. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel Dot Media. We now know the location of the Trudeau family vacation over the, the New Year's holiday. He wasn't just in the Bahamas. He was on the private island of the Aga Khan, an island called Bell Island. It's part of a, a strain of islands in the Bahamas the Hollywood Reporter calls the Hamptons of the Bahamas. You can access the island only through private helicopter or maybe the massive yacht that the Aga Khan moors there. A yacht so big he had to dredge the area to make the approach for his boat deeper. So yes, Trudeau was vacationing on the island of a billionaire philanthropist. There's so much wrong with this, from the fact that Canada does business with the Aga Khan to the secrecy, the complete and utter hypocrisy of staying on a billionaire's private island when all you talk about back home is the middle class. I'm always talking about our priority for creating growth for the middle class. Canadians know that we are focused on creating growth for the middle class, and we always follow the rules. We need to ensure that governments keep costs as low as possible, especially for middle class households. The middle class is already having a hard time making ends meet and struggling with debt. Now, I've never believed all of Justin Trudeau's prattle about the middle class, but that's because I know him. I've covered him for years. I know he spent most of his childhood living at this place, 24 Sussex Drive. He later lived in this Montreal mansion, which may look small from the front, but is in fact massive and perched just above downtown in a stunning location. The Trudeau family has been very wealthy for decades. His grandfather Charles built up the family fortune with a strain of gas stations around Montreal and interest in a number of other profitable businesses. So thanks to Charlie Trudeau, neither Justin nor his father ever had to have real jobs or work very hard. So how can these folks be expected to understand how this looks to regular, middle-class Canadians? Then there's the issue of the now massive conflict of interest between Trudeau, and I would argue his entire government, and a major beneficiary of Canadian aid money. The Aga Khan is the spiritual leader of millions of Ismaili Muslims around the world, and for years, he and his foundation, they've been credited with doing good works all over the planet. Development projects for reducing poverty, helping girls get an education in some of the poorest parts of the world. Successive Canadian governments have worked with them. They've funded them. Stephen Harper was pretty tight with the Aga Khan, but I don't think he ever took a vacation with him at his private island. But with Canada literally giving $100 million to the Aga Khan Foundation over the last few years, and likely more to carry on his development work, how does this look? Not very good, I'll tell you. It leaves a cloud, a Pete Rose asterisk over future donations. Then there's the secrecy. Is Justin Trudeau as Prime Minister entitled to a vacation? Absolutely. Maybe not the 10 a year he's been taking, but he's entitled to a vacation. But if he's in the Bahamas, why is his team putting out his daily itinerary saying Ottawa impersonal? Look at these three days. December 30th simply says Ottawa personal. 31st it says Ottawa impersonal, but notes he's given two interviews. January 2nd, Ottawa in personal. A basic read of this would make you think he was having downtime in Ottawa, in the nation's capital. Look, we're paying for the freight for most of the cost of this vacation. We're paying for the enlarged RCMP detail that will need to guard him 24-7 while he's there. We're paying for an air crew to be on standby in a nearby island. We deserve to know where he is. I'm not sure if Team Trudeau really understands all of this yet, but they have figured out one thing. This doesn't look good for their boy. So they've decided to opt out of Davos, the billionaire's club in Switzerland, and send him on a tour of Legion's Tim Hortons church basements to meet regular Canadians. The idea is being mocked by many in the media, from the Sun papers, people like Mark Bonacoski. I mean, just look at this Sun front page. And then there's dueling columns from Bono and Laurie Goldstein mocking Trudeau. You expect that from the Sun, but not from the Red Star. And yet here's Paul Wells in the Toronto Star saying this doesn't look good for Trudeau. Is this tour going to work? I don't know. But I'll tell you this, we do need to keep pulling back the layers of the onion on this, this tour story, just like the vacation story. Do you really think they're going to let Justin walk into a Timmy's and meet regular Canadians that haven't been vetted as good Liberal supporters? I doubt it. I expect he's going to take a page from Hillary Clinton's playbook and make sure he only meets with people that will tell him how wonderful he is. Well, trust me, I'll be watching for that when Justin's Please Love Me Again tour begins. If you like the video you just watched, make sure you never miss a Rebel video again. You can click subscribe for our YouTube channel or head on over to the rebel.media, become a member and access premium content. It's only there for the cool kids.